Good morning. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 18. Paul the Apostle just arrives into the city of Corinth. He had left Athens where he very successfully preached the gospel, Mars Hill, the Acropolis, the Parthenon. But now he's down in Corinth and he is befriended by two believers, Aquila and Priscilla. They open up their business of making tents to Paul. He becomes a tent maker with them for a season. Thanks for joining me on the journey of the church as we're reading about the birth of the church and how Paul the Apostle is establishing churches from Philippi, Thessalonica, Athens, and even Corinth. Well, here we are in Corinth, and he is preaching and teaching the best he can. He is working all day long with Aquila and Priscilla making tents. And then in the evening, he's in the city. He's in the city ministering to both Jew and Gentile. It's really something how Paul in his leadership role is willing to humble himself and do anything. When I consider how Paul is making tents, I am reminded that he was a member of the Sanhedrin, a member of the Pharisees. He was highly educated, a scholar in the things of the Word of God. And now he's in Corinth with the Gentiles in a pagan city. And he's working, making tents with his own hands. Paul is a man of integrity. He's a man that is humble. He's willing to do anything for the cause of Christ. And there in Corinth, he is going to be preaching Christ crucified. And he's working with everyone that comes in his path. It's really something as we're studying the second missionary journey and, and how Paul had picked up young Timothy over in Lystra, how he started working with Silas as they were up in Philippi. He works with Lydia, the jailer, at the jailers where he was uh, released by God from prison. And now he's down in Corinth, working with Aquila and Priscilla. Well, he's working so hard, but then uh, Silas and Timothy show up. And you know what? That's what it is. It's teamwork. It's, it's partnership. My friend used to say, there's no cowboys in heaven. Well, I think there are cowboys in heaven, but I understood what he meant. He meant that there aren't any solo people, that we're always in partnership. We are a team working together. And when Timothy and Silas arrive in Corinth, it enables Paul to work full-time in preaching and teaching the Word of God because he was overwhelmed doing all of these other things. And so he gets back to working full-time preaching and teaching. Just like in the book of Acts chapter six, where Peter and John, they appoint deacons so they can return back to full-time ministry of studying the word and praying and teaching. And that's what happens to Paul. We are a part of the body of Christ. And when everybody does their parts, we can operate in our spiritual gift. Well, I'm on the American River. I got here well over an hour ago in the dark, and I've been tracking these baby eagles, and it reminds me a lot of the church in Corinth. This is the feeding tree where in just a few minutes, the young eagles, they call them baby eagles. <laughs> right now, they're juvenile eagles because in 12 weeks' time, they went from little bitty cotton balls to these enormous birds that, well, they're as big as they're ever going to get. They're about two feet, two and a half feet tall, but they don't know what they're doing. They're baby eagles. They have to learn how to fly and they have to learn how to hunt. It's really something this part of the season to watch these juvenile baby eagles. They're only 12 weeks old and they don't know what to do with those six feet wingspan. They, they have to learn how to manage them. And that's the reason why they come to this feeding tree, because it's in an open space and it's much easier for them to manage. Well, that's what's happening in Corinth. You see, in 1 Corinthians, Paul is writing back to these new believers and he's writing to them saying, when I came to you, I didn't come with eloquent speech. I came preaching Christ crucified, the power of the cross. 
something and how I wish I could have spoken to you as spiritual mature saints of God but the reality is I had to speak to you as baby infant Christians just like these baby eagles you had all the spiritual gifts and you had so much knowledge but you didn't know what you were doing you were living in your flesh and you were living in the world and, and Paul calls them out in first Corinthians chapter three, just like this feeding tree where these eagles will be eating in just a few more minutes, they're baby eagles. Now, a, an adult eagle will fly high in the tree and catch a fish and take it up there and eat it. But the baby eagles, they can't do that because they don't know how to manage their wings. Having spiritual gifts is a wonderful thing, but a spiritual gift without spiritual maturity is very dangerous. And for extra credit today, you can read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 2, and 3 and, and how they had every spiritual gift. But there was discord and operating in the flesh instead of the spirit. I love Acts chapter 18 and the birth of the church in the city of Corinth. It's, oh, it's so exciting to see what God is doing and the power of the Holy Spirit seeing new believers come to the saving knowledge of Christ and the great church that will be established in Corinth. You be blessed today as you fill your heart with Acts chapter 18. And remember, we don't walk in the world and we don't walk in the flesh. We walk in the spirit. And Paul emphasizes that in the book of Galatians chapter 5 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You are spirit filled. You are born again. You're not a baby eagle. You're growing, learning to work together, serving together, humbly bringing the gospel, which is Christ crucified. You be blessed today as you fill your heart with the word of God in Jesus name. And I'm I'm going to return back to my focus on the river, listening to the word of God as I track these baby eagles. You be blessed today in Jesus name.